I am so excited to talk to you today. I have gotten lucky. I got really lucky. I've really uh, been trying to find great optics at uh, a very decent price, as close as I can get to alpha grade optics for around $500 max. And I was looking at a few contenders based on reviews that I'd been seeing. Uh, I, I could have gone for the GPO Passion. I could have gone for the Track Toric. Uh, or I could go for the Athlon Cronus. And in the end, my decision was for the Athlon Cronus simply because it came with the field flattener. That's a feature that I prefer. So I picked one up for about $370. That's $370, people. And I am a complete and utter winner as I sit here. And I think uh, a number of you out there might be winners too if you want to pick these things up. Because right now, uh, you, can, you are looking, even though they generally average about $500, uh, you're looking at uh, Amazon pricing them at $349. 77 delivered and the features that come on this thing are just incredible for that kind of money it's just absolutely incredible now I'm gonna kick this whole thing off really by talking about thresholds um, you can get any type of binocular out there and from one to the next they can all be of the bakes, basically the same class, same grade. If you really work at it, you can go out and find differences. A little difference in color, a little difference in its ability to resolve. But generally, you throw it up to your eyes and basically it's at a certain plateau where you go, this is, it's crap. It's just a crap binocular. And you get to the next level next plateau and in that area you know you're gonna have the next batch of binoculars that are gonna be you know well they're better and if you really set out your tests like we do uh, you can you know basically suss out different differences and okay so maybe this one's a little better than this one but the bottom line is if you weren't in the process of trying to evaluate them that closely, you'd just throw them up to your eyes and go, yeah, they're, about, they're really the same. You know, they're both, eh, they're okay. And you, eventually, you cross a threshold to where they aren't the same, to where this is somehow markedly different. I'm really noticing a difference here, and it's not hard to do. I don't have to work at it. Now you know you're at another plateau. Well, what I've been noticing as I'm going through a number of binoculars that I've picked up is very often I'm picking these things up and they have reached that threshold. They've gone beyond that threshold right up into the expensive glass category. Um, now, at that particular plateau, now it comes down to, well, which is truly better? But you know what? If I'm not in the business of trying to figure out which is truly better, I'm just fat up, flat out pleased because I, I'm basically throwing the expensive binocular to my face and going, wow, that's nice. And then throwing the $379 one up and going, you know, I'm really not seeing a difference. And I'm not in the mood to sit and try and figure out which is actually better. Bottom line is, uh, this is excellent for its price. The Athlon Cronus. Now we're into it. And I will be very careful in giving you everything I've come up with on this thing. Um, this thing is an absolute pleasure. First of all, your rain guards, real supple. You know, for all I know, they're basically <laughs> the same type that's used on that Celestron that I previously reviewed. Um, yeah, not coming off. Not coming off. 
What about these objective covers? Not coming loose. Uh, they are the internal style and heavy ridges to lock into grooves. Uh, very, very secure. And I, I'm going to trust these guys. And again, they're hanging. They're, they're not flopping up in front of my view. That's how I like it. Is there anything about the body that really strikes me as uh, peculiarly great? No. no they're, they're two barrels. There's no thumb indentations. It, it, uh, does, it has a, a rubber coating, but it appears to be very thin. And, um, but it is not on a polycarbonate body. This, this is magnesium, folks. And... It's heavy. This is heavy. That's the one thing about this. It, it's, a, it's a chunky little binocular. Um, this is a 10 by 42. And I think what I really want to focus in on with these things uh, is really optically what you're getting. Um, the the focus on this, this focus wheel, it's not, there's no, there's no backlash on it. Is it as smooth as a Celestron? Actually, it's not. Nonetheless, smooth enough. And what I really appreciate, and this is the feature, this is really the feature that got me, is this diopter. The diopter on this thing is right in front of this focus wheel and it's ingenious I have no I have no way of knowing how long it's gonna last I don't know how durable it is I'm not about to torture test it but I'm gonna enjoy it as long as I possibly can which uh, I mean I'll enjoy it just simply knowing I have the knowledge of it uh, you just depress a button and it slides effortlessly really really smooth um, very accurate, very precise. I thought initially when I saw it that I was going to be dealing with uh, an incremental diopter, click, 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 and be as frustrated as I, I, I was with the Opticron. But uh, actually, no, this lets you adjust absolutely perfectly. Then you let up on the button and it locks. Um, to me, it's the best diopter I've ever run across. The easiest to use, and there's a great deal of comfort knowing that it's secure. It ain't going anywhere. You know, I did uh, that review on that uh, Kunming Maven uh, 8x56 that was not terrible, but not great. And it had the diopter in the same location, but that one wasn't lockable. So, yes, while you're holding this, your finger may gravitate towards this button, and you'll feel it, but it isn't going to move. You deliberately have to depress it to get the thing to work. Um, very nice. Took the thing out. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you about these eye cups. These are all or nothing eye cups. It's uh, all the way down or all the way up, but really secure and of course with my glasses I'm always going to have them down if that's a deal breaker for you oh that's too bad because let me tell you uh, took these out did the 1951 and if you guys have ever seen my review of the BPO's these these are 10 by 42 also look at the size difference this unit here is the one that outperformed the Vortex Razor UHD. Well, I can't say outperformed. It was an equivalent performer to it. Uh, when I did the test against the Athlon, the Athlon was uh, almost, almost there. Um, this would, would bring in... Uh, group negative one element three this one group negative one 
Element 2. I never made it to 3. Uh, so not this is still the winner with its uh, dark lenses. But you know what? This is, this is the one that I prefer, actually. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's the field flattener. The field flattener in this thing actually works. And I mean it really works. It works well. Um, I, there's, no, there's no point in talking about sweet spots. You know, if you wanted me to get extremely accurate and technical, I could say it's got a sweet spot of about 30% where it's just frickin' sharp. And then there's a slight drop all the way to the edge. All the way to the edge, folks. <laughs> It's beautiful. I mean, essentially, it's in focus all the way to the edge. Um, no sense of being cheated here. Now, all of this is being done at home. I, I, I love the views. I had this thing out. I'm looking at Jupiter and its moons. Uh, nice black, velvety, dark sky. And then there's Jupiter and the moons. You know, beautiful little pinpoints. Um, but, you know, I was ready to do the review, and then I backed off because, you know, I had this thing up against the razor. Let's take this thing out and see if we can put it up against a razor. Went to Bass Pro Shops, and um, the gentleman understood that, you know, I was there to make a comparison. Uh, what I really wanted to do was at least test it against the Viper, since we're looking at about the same price range. Um, and of course, this is not an at-home test. This is not scientifically done. It's not controlled. It's just looking across the insides of Bass Pro Shop, or not, I'm sorry, not Bass Pro Shop, Dick's Sporting Goods. We went to Dick's Sporting Goods. And I'm looking across the inside of that uh, shop, and we're reading various size print on boxes and the the viper didn't have a chance this thing now we're this is what i'm talking about okay threshold way beyond that threshold this thing was much clearly sharper than the viper uh, then i noticed that in the case they did have the uhd and I asked the gentleman, can I please check the UHD out? Um, now, he didn't have a 10 by 42. He had a 10 by 50. <clears throat> Nonetheless, took the thing out, checked it. And again, this is not... I'm there to just see how does it compare. Just a general comparison. It's a threshold comparison. Is this at that plateau? of a $1,700 binocular, and it certainly was. It was absolutely in the same category. I couldn't, I was not able, just checking it across the building and looking at the print that I couldn't make out with the Viper, but I could with this, and, and I could with the UHD. Uh, but the UHD didn't appear to be giving me anything more, any, any greater clarity any greater sharpness, uh, wider field of view, and I like that. And I'll tell you right now, I actually like the UHD. Uh, feels good in my hands. Uh, my wife came up shortly after I started that test, and I had her get behind it. She liked it. She, you know, the UHD is, uh, she says it felt rich, <laughs> had a nice rich feeling. Um, but she got behind it, and focused in and did the test as well and like I say in other videos while she's not a binocular person she's not a slouch and she knows she knows what she likes and she knows what looks good so for me they came out even and I was happy with that I knew that I had gotten a smaller binocular with a host of nice little features that was at $390, 370 390 you know, 
as, as good as a UHD, practically? Well, she got behind it, and her report was different. It didn't quite ring true uh, to mine. And we went out to eat afterwards, and I kind of pushed her to you know, get more information. The bottom line with her was, uh, no, she really liked the UHD, but it wasn't as bright, and it wasn't as sharp. That's what she says. It wasn't as sharp as, as this thing. And she didn't even know what this was. This was the first time she'd seen it because I basically got it behind her back. Um, so, yeah, take that and run with it. I'm sure if I had both of them here at home and I was putting them through their paces like I normally do, within that plateau I'd be able to find out, okay, which is really better. But my point here is this made it over that threshold. And it's in that class. This is, we'll just give it the full retail price, 500 bucks. It's in the class of a $1,700 Vortex. And on top of that, uh, it has a completely flat field. No need to talk about sweet spots uh, and a lockable, um, diopter that it's the slickest thing I've it's the slickest snot it's the slickest thing I've ever come across and if I'll tell you what if they had an 8 or 10 power by 56 with the same setup and the same lockable diopter I'd be buying it right now and I'd be a happy boy but uh, right now I'm happy with these um, this is a good beginning for the Christmas season and right now if you want to run out and get yourself one, uh, whether it's uh, 8x42 or the 10x42, um, I'm going to tell you it's not the lightest thing in the world, but man, this thing is sharp, it's slick, and uh, it's actually just plain fun to use. So there you go. Take that and run with it. And now we'll show you stats, and we'll show you some pictures and if there's any links to any other commentary out there we'll give that to you also and you guys take care uh, hope to be seeing you soon with some some more goodies and uh, talk to you later bye what does that mean that the means you can focus no it means well yeah because people like to focus you want to, oh, there's a butterfly. Can I see it, you know, and it's real close to you? And you want to see the detail of a butterfly? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a close focus binocular, you get that. Otherwise, you're like, oh, it's and only. And the factory gives you some ridiculous numbers that have nothing to do with reality. Sometimes, yeah.